The new direction of Iowa Hi-Fi takes you into the digital world. With laser technology, Iowa's new series is the shape of sound to come. Iowa Innovation. Hi-Fi will never be the same again. G'day folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to get back with the Iowa Excelia XK007 cassette deck which I paid it probably entirely too much money for, but it's here, it is what it is. Now, if you recall, last time we serviced this, I got everything all buttoned up. I got the lube job nice and lubed up, as it were, and yet there was still a wow and flutter problem with this machine. It was still running somewhere close to 0.1% or something like that, and the spec for this is something like 0 0.035 or something crazy like that. So what I'm hoping to do today is to bring that under control so I can record a bunch of cassettes for all these other tape decks i got to work on. And there's one more incoming now. It's a boombox. First one this year. Paid entirely too much for it because that's the way it goes with this channel, but it is what it is. We'll take a look at that when it gets here. I'm not too worried about it right now. But yeah, we need to get this this guy happy. So the way we're going to do this is going to be in three stages. First, I'm going to replace the filter capacitor on the 10.8 volt rail that supplies the uh, capstan motor. I don't think this is going to work, but I do have the part. It's left over from another project. So what the hey, we've got it. Might as well put it in in the machine. Part two is going to be a new motor, and I think this is what's going to cure the issue, or at least help the most with the issue. The motor that's in here is weak, and I know it's weak because I've run several tapes through this since the last video, and it's still having trouble getting all the way to the end without uh, problems. So yeah, I ordered three new motors for it. Most likely only one is necessary, but I got three, just in case. This is the same motor that's used in the Carver TD1700 that I've got over on the shelf there. And yeah, if we can't get this guy happy, we're going to have to use the Carver for that. For the uh, taping, I mean. But we're going to give it our best shot. These are much smaller motors than the one that's actually in here, so it might seem a little confusing at first as to why I'm replacing a, a big giant motor with these one of these small ones, but take it from me, the Carver uses the exact same transport as this thing does, so this will work in this machine, as long as I can get it mounted. And step three, should it come to that, we're going to try some more new belts. These come from Manatree in England. They're called Deck Tech belts. I've heard good things about them. Never tried them? Well, maybe today's the day. And it seems to me that probably what's going to work is a new capstan, a main capstan belt. I don't know that I want to mess with the inner capstan belt because that's a very, very picky belt. And yeah, if I can at least keep the uh, fix your audio belt on the inner capstan side of things, I'll be happy. But. All right, let's get into this. The first thing we need to do is get a baseline here. Since I have run several tapes through this, and there has been some belt break-in now, we need to see exactly how it's performing. So let's do that. I've got my test tape in there. We'll bring you over here. So you can have a look at the laptop. I'll hit start there. And yeah, that's where she's running right now. That's too high. I don't want it that high. We're going to try and fix that. Yes, we are. And look at the frequency. It's still off. Well, that's to be expected, I guess, from an old motor like this one. But it's kind of getting a little better as we go along here. 0 0.09, 0 0.06. It's still jumping around really inconsistently, so we got to get that new motor in there for sure. But yeah, I'm going to stop this right now. 
to pull my tape out, of course. And the first thing we're going to do is replace that capacitor. So I'm going to do this entirely off camera, I think, just so I don't have to waste too much of your time, because there's, there's going to be a lot of trial and error when it comes to replacing belts on this thing again. So I'll be back. Okay, folks, I haven't done the capacitor yet. It just, I just realized that I'm skipping a step here. I have an oscilloscope now. So I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to fire up said oscilloscope. And we're going to see just how much ripple is in the motor drive here. Let's see if I can get over here and do this. All right, there we go. Show you the scope right here. There is a little bit of junk in the signal, I'm going to say. So yeah, we'll take a look at this after I do the capacitor replacement, and then we'll see where we're at. How's that? Okay, now I'll replace the capacitor. Airport! Ah! Airport! Airport! Ah! Airport. speaks the world's language. Iowa. All right, so the capacitor is in, and excuse my little mess here. I know I'm not very organized. We'll clean this up eventually, if we can get this thing going the way I want it to today, but I just wanted to point something out here. Here's our new capacitor, and here's a whole lot of discoloration on the circuit board. Let me give you a closer look. Those diodes have been running hot for a long time, and while I had the board out, I came to realize that there were quite a few bad solder joints under there. So I touched all those up too, and I found something similar underneath this regulator as well. So I went through those, touched them up, should be good now. So let me plug in and turn on, and we'll see if anything blows up in there. All right. Yeah, maybe we'll come over in this angle again. All right, power. Seems to be good. Plays properly. Now I gotta get the right tape in there and we'll check wow and flutter with the new capacitor. Then we'll take a look with the scope. Okay. Let me bring you in here real close. Let me get my mouse here. Start and play. Actually, that is an improvement. Not a very big improvement, but it is an improvement. I'm actually kind of shocked. Anyway, let me see if I can get the scope on this. I don't know if I should be doing this while it's running, but we'll give it a shot. Okay, there we go. Still a lot of random crap getting in there. I'm not looking at that little peak in the center. I'm looking at all those little spikes that are happening all over the place there. So yeah, I didn't think that was going to change anything. But like I said, we had the capacitor. Easy enough to try it. So next step, replace the motor. And uh, let's see, do I want to do this on camera? I don't know. Actually, what I do want to do is I, is I want to check the uh, 
the old capacitor on that little meter I have. I don't have a proper ESR meter yet, but I'm working on that. All right, here's our little meter. I have shorted the capacitor to make sure it's not damaging the meter at all. See what we get. Capacitor's good. I knew it would be. But like I said, I had the part. Nothing wrong with trying it. And um, yeah, I think we'll do the motor replacement on camera. Let me just shut you off real quick. I'm going to at least get the... I don't know, the plate out and whatnot so we can get access to the motor. I have to do that anyway in order to get to all these belts, but... Yeah, let's see where we get with this. Okay, now the question is, is my shaft length going to be enough on the new motors? That I am not sure about. Let me get one of them out here. It's a little iffy looking, if you ask me. Yeah, definitely a shorter shaft. I hope this works. Let me just warm up the soldering iron real quick. We'll try, that's all I can promise. If I have to, I'll put this motor back in. And yeah, you can see just how much smaller the new motor is. But remember, this is a motor inside of a motor, so. Yeah, I just hope I don't have to open this up and try to fit this thing inside the, the case, because that sounds, like, annoying to me. All right, that ought to do it right there. We'll just put the old motor aside for now, in case we end up needing it. And we'll see if we can get her mounted on this. I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work. It should work. But I'm forgetting I gotta put the pulley on first, I think. Maybe that'll work, maybe it won't, we'll see. All right, we got us a new motor. Now, I'm gonna shut you off real quick while I reassemble this with the old Fix Your Audio belt, and we'll just see where we come out with the wow and flutter. Very likely I'm gonna have to dial in the speed on this thing too, so keep that in mind. All right, the moment of truth. Is this motor gonna work? Right now I've only got three of the four screws holding that plate on, so. That should be good enough for our testing purposes. All right, does said motor run? Yes, it does. It is running way off speed, I'll tell you that right now. Let me restart the wow and flutter thing over there. Yeah, it's running so far off speed that it's just nuts. So let me zoom you in here. And I will try to dial this in because, yeah, it's so far off speed it can't even get a 
an actual reading. So let's adjust on this motor and see what we can do. Right about there ought to do it. And look at the wow and flutter. Look at that. 0 0.05, 0 0.06. This thing is now running right on with the carver. It's actually a little better in some cases. Well, not some cases, a little bit. So yeah, a new motor made a big difference for this machine. Oh, now we're even getting better here. 0 0.04. Man, what a difference. I still got to tweak on it a little bit. I'd like to get the speed up just a little more. Just waiting to see if I can get it to settle down around 3,000. I'd like to get it dead on the money if I can. It's getting close. I think I'm just going to leave it right there, honestly. That's the best I've seen this deck since I got it. Oh, 0 0.05. Keep going down. Oh, did you see that? 0 0.03. I'm loving this. And I know what you're thinking. You want me to break out the scope to see what the new motor looks like. Let's do that. I didn't buy that scope to not use it, so let's use it. Am I still going to try belts? Well, maybe one or two. I think I'll only try the main drive belt. I'm not messing with the inner capstan belt at all at this point, I don't think. Yeah, I could change my mind on that. We'll see. Let me get the scope. Power it up. Now, how am I going to do this? Actually, let's move you over here. It's a little easier for me. All right, I will reach the probe around. Yeah, a little different. A little noisier, but none of those gigantic random spikes that we were seeing with the old motor. The reason those spikes were showing up in the in the uh, old motor is because the brushes are worn down in that thing, and there's brush material all over the inside of that motor, and you can't really clean that up too well. So, yeah, results speak for themselves. Clearly that motor needed to be changed. And she's drifting low now. Why is she drifting low? Just trying to get my scope put away here. I might want to just observe and adjust on this a little bit more. So let me do that 
Then after that, I will take the Fix Your Audio master drive belt off for the main capstan drive. And then I'll see if I can find a Deck Tech be belt that'll work. And then we'll try that one. All right, folks, Deck Tech belt number one is on. And the one I'm trying first is this one here. If you need to know what to order, if this works at all. 5 by 0 0.55 by 76 millimeters. Now, when I measured the internal circumference of the, the uh, Fix Your Audio belt, it ended up as being, oh, what is it? I gotta brain myself some math. Let's see, it was 119 times two. So, 238 or so internal circumference. And the deck tech belt I put on is a little shy of that. It's about four millimeters shy of that, so 234. We'll see if it works. I just basically guesstimated all these belts because deck tech measurements aren't quite the same as uh, as you normally would expect from ordering belts so let's see how this turns out I am turned on right yes I am I just don't have a tape in there so let's see what a deck tech belt gets us Now it's very likely this belt has to break in too. But at least from what I'm seeing on the Wow and Flutter meter, it's basically starting out right about where the Fix Your Audio belt did. We'll let it run for a bit and we'll see where it gets. Belts have to break in, so you gotta let them do their thing. So I'm going to let this run for a while and then we'll check back. All right, folks, I'm back. And this is what we're currently dealing with at the moment. I've had the deck running for maybe 10, 15 minutes on this test tape so far with the deck tech belt. And what I'm noticing is it's very, very slightly worse quality than the, uh, than the uh, fix your audio belt. But it's really, really close. I mean it's ridiculously close. I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to say that if you have one of these decks and if you can't get the fix your audio belt anymore, Deck Tech is a good solution here. The belt I'm running is exactly the same width as the, the uh, fix your audio belt. It seems to be holding up nicely and here are the, here's the, uh, the one I'm using again. So yeah, don't be ashamed, or don't be, I can't talk again. This heat's driving me crazy. It's really hot and really humid out there. Anyhow, yeah, I'm going to say Deck Tech is an acceptable alternative to fix your audio, but we are still not getting the, the actual wow and flutter specs we're supposed to be getting out of this. So what can we try now? Well... The only thing I have left to try is the inner capstan belt. Uh, not looking forward to this, but I guess I've got the belts here. We're going to try it. All right, folks, we're back together again. And I now have a deck tech belt on the inner capstan side of things. And we're using the Fix Your Audio belt as the main drive belt because that one performed a little bit better. So why not use it? So this is the deck tech belt for the inner capstan belt. It is exactly identical to the uh, Fix Your Audio belt. And let's see, what's the inner circumference again? I measured it. Let's see, I think it's 114 times two, so 228. Yeah, 228 millimeters internal circumference is the right belt for the inner cap stand. So we're just gonna see if this makes a difference to the Wow and Flutter at all. And this is probably going to be the end of it here because I'll know which belts I want to use. I've got a bunch of other belts here. The reason I've got all these other belts here is because I wasn't exactly sure whether or not my measurements were going to be coming out correctly with the, uh, with the deck tech belts. 
So I got a whole bunch of different varieties here just to try out in case I couldn't find the right ones. So that's what all those extra ones are here for, but we've got the actual right ones now. So let's see where this goes. We'll let her settle in here. Actually, this is looking like a big improvement. Well, maybe not a big improvement. A slight improvement. So yeah, I'm going to call it now. Deck Tech belts are absolutely worth buying for these types of machines. We're never going to get perfect results anymore because who knows where Iowa found their original belts from. But uh, yeah, this is already outperforming the carver. The carver is able to get results below 0 0.04, but only occasionally. This guy is doing a consistent 0 0.05 now. And we haven't even gotten that belt to break in yet. Let me just look down in there. It looks like there's some little bit of wobble back and forth with the uh, inner capstan belt now. I'm just checking on this. I may leave this belt in there. I may not. I don't recall seeing that amount of wobble with the, uh, the Fix Your Audio Belt. Let me show you what I mean here. There, you see that? It's kind of jerking back and forth like so down in there. That's where some of our extra wow and flutter is coming from. And I'm looking at the uh, Fix Your Audio Belt on the main drive as well. That one's not moving a millimeter. It's dead solid stable. So yes, we should absolutely keep the Fix Your Audio Belt on the main drive. I'm just waiting to see if this settles down some more. Let me run this deck for a few minutes and we'll come back. Okay, folks, I've been watching this for quite a few minutes now. And it is kind of getting better as time goes by. But I'm thinking my general impressions are the same with the inner cap stand belt. Just a hair worse than the fix your audio belt. So yes, I'm going to say one more time, if you absolutely need to find belts and you can't get access to the Fix Your Audio belts, go ahead and do the deck tech stuff. It works well enough. These numbers are perfectly fine. I mean, they're basically right in line with the Carver deck, so that's all I really wanted to get out of this. But since I do have one belt that is better performing on the inner capstan side of things, I'm going to swap that back in the machine and I'm going to close up and call it a day. I'm going to have to run this machine through several tapes just to get the, uh, the new motor to break in here. And then I'll go back in once I'm ready to start doing my recording, make sure the frequency is dead on target. I've got it real close now, but I think I can do better. But yeah, this is very encouraging. As of right now, this deck is actually is actually worth the uh, 500 bucks I spent to to get it into this shape. So, it's going to be my main recording deck for well, I don't know how long. I'm going to try to do this again next year. But next year I am not wasting time with these belt drive decks. I'm going direct drive for the next one. And I don't expect too much to to hang with this sonically, but uh, yeah, I would just like to try the, the direct drive ones now. 
Okay, so it's the day after I finished up the work of replacing the motor in this uh, beast of a machine here. And something is just kind of not sitting right with me about uh, the performance I was getting towards the end of the video there. I did get the Fix Your Audio belts all the way back in, both of them. And I ran the machine for quite a while. And yet, something just wasn't right, I thought, when I was looking at the Wow and Flutter meter. See, even though the wow and flutter was measuring in it a very consistent 0.05%, which is very, very close to the spec on this unit, there just seemed to be no consistent speed out of it. It was still bouncing around between, oh, about 29.95 hertz and, uh, oh, what was it, 30.17 or something like that. And it just took... I just really thought that uh, I would get a better result from that from a brand new motor. So what I did was I took my results back to the forum thread I had created about this machine over at Tapeheads, and I sort of po and I posted my results there, and somebody came back with something interesting. This is the motor I have put inside this machine here. Or rather, this is one of the, the motors I didn't use, one of the three. And what he said was, he found that a lot of these aren't actual Mabuchi motors. These are actually knockoffs that don't hold their speed very well. So I think that's what's going on here. I've got knockoff motors here. So, which raises a conundrum for me. What do I do now? Do I really want the best possible performance out of this machine? And how do I get there? It's clear to me that this is not the answer if I want to keep the Excelia tape deck working at its peak performance. And I know we can get there now. We're running so close to the actual specifications on this unit. Okay, folks, update. So I went through one whole tape with this thing and we've still got a problem. Allow me to demonstrate. As you see, the tape that's in there is just about at the end of the tape there. If I can get my gimbal to work. And it's still doing the slowdown thing. Let me demonstrate. Of course, now it's not gonna do it. There, you can hear it a little bit. Yeah, so we've still got a problem. And I actually found the problem, finally, I think. Let me see if I can demonstrate that. You see, this is where the supply pinch roller is. So we've got a problem with the supply side pinch roller on this thing. Not exactly sure what the problem would be, but all I know is I gotta get this whole thing apart yet again, get the transport out and see if I can figure out why we're not getting the uh, proper pressure off this pinch roller. Because all I gotta do is push up on that just a little bit and suddenly it straightens up. And I wish I could demonstrate this with other music because I'm probably gonna get a copyright strike off this, but it is what it is. I have to use the tape I was actually playing when I noticed the problem. Yeah, now it's not going to do it anymore. See, when I pull the pinch roller away from the tape, suddenly it's better. So yeah, that's what's causing our speed variations on the motor as well, on the new motor. At least it's very possible that's why it is. It's still a knockoff motor, I think, but yeah, for it to still be slowing down at the end of the tape with a brand new motor, clearly it's not the motor at fault. So let me get back in there. Well, folks, at the risk of being laughed off YouTube forever, I think I finally found the problem. It's something I overlooked. You see this on this pinch roller, this little 
slotted area right here. I'm moving the probe back and forth, or the dental pick. That's a tape guide. That was insanely dirty. And apparently, that's all it took to cause that problem. At least I think so. I did dribble a little bit of oil down in here. It didn't feel like there was a lubrication problem down in there. And I did mess with this nut just a little bit. I put it back where it was supposed to be, so no worries there. But yeah, if you do take that nut off, you're going to have to realign the whole tape deck, and I don't have the tools for that, so I'm going to try and leave that alone. So let me just set you up here. And I'm going to just run the deck here with you guys. And then we'll see if it still acts up like that, because I had it playing really terribly for a second there. But now it's... It seems to be doing better, so let's see if it makes another fool out of me. Well, I don't know. No, it's still having trouble moving that tape. Yeah, it could be this thing was messed with at some point in the past and they never got it quite right again. But yeah, you gotta check that tape guide and make sure it's clean as well when you service one of these. Because this wasn't that clean. Yeah, I could see where this would cause an issue like that if the uh, tape got pulled up onto the the ridges there, that would definitely cause this issue. Yeah, it's doing a lot better now, it seems like. I don't know if the problem is fully solved yet or not, but it's clear to me that I changed the motor without need, or at least partially without need. I still think this old motor isn't very good, so I'm going to Stick with the new motor. Yeah, it seems to be doing a lot better now, so I'm gonna put this back together as is. I'll play a few more tapes, and then maybe I'll come back. All right, folks, update. We got her. It was that tape guide. I'm still not quite happy with this motor, but uh, I do have to give it a chance to break in and settle down. And once it does, I'll adjust the speed and hopefully this thing will be ready to actually do some recording for a change. I have now run several of these old Maxell UD2s through the machine and it is no longer slowing down towards the end of the tape. It is kind of running slow in general, so That'll be an issue with those knockoff motors, but nothing I can do until I just let it play and break in a while. That's all there is to it. So yeah, I think we're finally getting to the end of the story on this one. If you've got one of these decks and you're aiming to service it, just be patient. Go slow. You will get there, I promise. These decks are really finicky. They will test your patience. So the key is to... Just walk away when you get too frustrated. So yeah, that's going to be it for the video today, guys. Take care.